Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Parts Talk. Thank you for joining me, I appreciate each and every one of you. Now it's been a while since I reported on the net zero and EVs as being promoted here by our Western governments. And if you appreciate this content, consider subscribing and don't forget to activate notifications, ensuring you never miss a video. Now in today's episode, I'm going into some of the reasons why EV insurance and repair costs are going upwards just like everything else, that is high inflation, high interest rates, and high prices. And this discussion was sparked by an unfortunate incident here in Canada where a gentleman purchased a pre-owned 2017 Hyundai Ioniq with only 69,000 kilometers on the odometer. Now, shortly after exceeding the 160,000 kilometer warranty limit, the battery failed, leaving him in a challenging situation. Let's get straight into this video. I felt like I got kicked in the privates. Simrat Such is still feeling the pain over what recently happened with his electric vehicle. I was an electric fan and I want to get another electric vehicle, but from Hyundai, this has really put a bad taste in my mouth towards them. Hyundai's 2017 Ionic was launched in New York with great fanfare in 2016. The Ionic Electric hybrid version and a fully electric model bought by Such. He was the second owner, but the car still had lots of warranty left on the electrical system and battery at the time. And since Such had previously owned a different electric vehicle, he was a believer. Didn't have any issues with my first vehicle, so thought it would be the right avenue to try a second vehicle. He had no issues with the car until this happened. I had an EV light come on. I had taken it to the shop. They couldn't find anything wrong. But there was indeed a problem. Two weeks after that, the vehicle stopped charging. The dealership in Hamilton said he needed the battery replaced. The quote stunned him. I was provided a quote at $50,000. Between the battery installation and taxes, it totaled just over $50,000. I was just floored. Especially because his 160,000 kilometer electric vehicle warranty had just run out. The dealer in Hyundai told Such there was nothing they could do. I still had to pay $500 for them to tell me the car's no good. Stories like this one are the kind to scare off buyers concerned about the high cost of electric vehicle repairs. When confronted with the choice to fix or dispose of his powerless Hyundai Ionic, he chose the latter. I ended up scrapping the vehicle and collecting around $1,000. But when Global News asked Hyundai Canada to investigate, we were told there'd been a communications breakdown at the head office level. The case should have been escalated immediately for additional review. They told us we extend our sincere apologies to Mr. Such for these lapses, adding it wanted to resolve this situation by paying fair market value for his vehicle, either in cash or towards a new Hyundai, as part of our commitment to our customers. Hyundai's decision could put twenty-five or $30,000 in Such's pocket toward a new vehicle, replacing a car he scrapped. So this is a case of damned if you do and damned if you don't. Now, the EV supporters will argue that EVs are simpler to repair due to fewer moving parts. However, they overlook a crucial factor, the traction battery, a component that constitutes a significant portion of the car's value, and the battery is the entire chassis of the battery. Hence, it's called a skateboard battery. And this battery consisting of over 7,000 lithium iron cells is challenging to repair and often needs complete replacement. There are numerous videos there on TikTok highlighting how the batteries are being replaced and how the technicians are going about replacing them using the jack stands and everything else. And the cost of replacing an EV battery can be really expensive, reaching over $50,000 as seen here with the video. And even with some warranty remaining, this owner found himself scrapping the vehicle for a mere $11,000. So it highlights the financial impact of EV repairs. It's very important to note that many traction batteries, including those of Tesla, are not easily repairable, complicating the repair process even further. The intricate cooling system, essential for managing heat during charging and discharging, adds to the complexity of these cars. Another thing is the requirements required to quarantine EVs with damaged batteries poses a logistical challenge for repair shops. And with the need to keep damaged EVs meters away from other vehicles or properties, this will only make the storage space for EVs significantly limited compared to traditional cars. 
and this challenging repair factor only contribute to the rise in insurance premiums for EVs. Insurance companies, after assessing the challenges and condition of the traction batteries, will pass on that additional cost to their customers. The claims process for EVs becomes even more intricate and time-consuming compared to internal combustion cars. So the unique challenges associated with EV repairs, particularly the difficulty in working on traction batteries, will only lead repair shops to prefer declaring EVs as total losses. As a result, EV insurance premiums are likely to continue their upward trend. But funny thing though, this is just one story from an individual standpoint. Now take a look at what's going on at the government level. Three years ago, former Mayor Don Iveson said the city's newly purchased electric buses would save the city money. These super efficient buses will help us long into the future. But that isn't the case. Those buses have actually been racking up repair costs. Proterra, the company that manufactured the 60 buses Edmonton ordered, filed for bankruptcy protection in the U.S. this summer. And a document filed as part of that case shows the city has had numerous problems with the vehicles, from battery life to software. From what I gathered this morning, there was only 16 of the Proterra buses that were able to go on the road this morning. The rest of them are broken down, and for the most part, they're waiting for parts, and it takes a long time to get the parts for them. So take note, it's 16 of 60 buses are able to go on the road to pick up passengers and get people to where they want to go out of 60. 16 and they're awaiting parts and the company responsible for these vehicles are actually filing for bankruptcy in the United States. Uh, we've had some that have been down for over a year waiting for parts. Drivers have complained to the union. A small person or a big person has a lot of trouble driving it. They, they just don't fit in that cab. The city is seeking more than $1 million in these bankruptcy proceedings, plus assurances that its contracts will be honored. In a statement, a city spokesperson says the city will take all necessary steps to preserve its rights. Proterra didn't respond to a request for comments. Experts say this news is concerning, but it doesn't mean the electric bus industry as a whole is in trouble. When it comes to zero emission buses and, and trucks, the sort of sales globally, I think excluding China, uh, have tripled in the past five years. So we're seeing about an annual growth of, of about 33%. And it's only growing because of the government mandate that is there. China is going all out because they have the resources over there to pr actually produce the batteries. Us to compete with them, it's going to be very challenging because it's a logistical nightmare for us to put everything together at one particular location. Good news for Edmonton is batteries should keep getting better. There's an enormous amount of money being poured into battery technologies. So it will get there. I, I think electric buses will be part of our future, whether it's these buses or other buses, I don't know. But yeah, they'll play a part for sure. Also playing a role, hydrogen buses, which produce no exhaust pipe emissions. Edmonton is currently testing one hydrogen bus with plans to adapt two diesel buses to use the emerging fuel. Madeline Cummings, CBC News, Edmonton. I like how everyone is trying to remain optimistic considering the fact that they have no idea when everything is going to be streamlined. Yes, a date is set between 2030 to 2050. However, it's a teething pain. That's what they're trying to say to us here. And it's going to take much longer. But they also need to take into consideration how many companies, especially startup companies, have gone belly up and people losing their jobs because they're unable to compete with the mandate that is out there, which is the electrification of the automotive sector. And remember, it all started here. Today, Canada is in a position to raise our climate ambition once again. Our new climate target for 2030 is to reduce our 2005 emission levels by 40 to 45 percent. And then it continued with here. How dare you? Hopefully we'll get it right very soon. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please drop a comment below and share your thoughts. Remember to grab a copy of my ebook, The Parts Manager Guide. Please smash that like button on your way out. It'll only take you 1.5 seconds to do so. Until next time.